I've been given the opportunity to do this research paper. Um, and basically the research paper revolves around the condition of asthma, which is very prevalent uh, worldwide affecting 300 million people. In America, I believe it affects one in 13 people. And asthma is a very broad condition. So the severity ranges from person to person. But um, what we looked at is a real world study in long-term use of azithromycin as prophylaxis in asthmatic patients. What you need to consider is um, asthma is treated in a stepwise way. So if we look at the BTS guidelines, which is a very prominent, British Thoracic Society is a very prominent uh, figurehead within the UK. So their recommendations is what we, what I, what I usually follow. Um, the, the, they've actually recommended long-term macrolide use um, at a low dose to prevent asthma exacerbations. But this is in addition to all the other treatments that are already available, like inhaled corticosteroids. So um, the treatment they recommended, the low dose macrolide, this is if high uh, adherence to high dose steroids is still not helping and the patient is still requiring steroids um, because they're having exacerbations in a year. So that's when you think about using low dose macrolide. And the one um, of choice is usually azithromycin because compared to other macrolides, it's actually found higher in concentration of the respiratory secretion. So that's probably the best one to use. Um, with regards to does azithromycin thwart asthma exacerbation, um, it's definitely not a miracle drug. Um, so it, azithromycin should not replace steroids in acute asthma exacerbations, but definitely azithromycin does have a place in, in treatment. Um, but the risk and benefits should be discussed between the patient and the clinician so that holistic patient care is achieved. So we've established that azithromycin is not a replacement, but it has a lot of benefits. So azithromycin is both antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. And so it's a great drug to use. With our study itself, we've actually reported that there was a 6.44 um, infection rate before Whereas after, if I can get the figures up, it's, it's 1.52 with azithromycin use. And this was statistically significant. And this was actually really great to see. So um, considering all of this, we've, we've, uh, we've piled together the actual research and put it in a poster presentation, which I was able to present to Chess. What was the key clinical implications of this study uh, is that um, compared to previous randomized controlled trials, this particular study has confirmed the findings that as in asthma management, azithromycin has got a well-established role. What the British Thoracic Society guideline did say was that we use 500 milligrams three times a week. What we have shown in our study was that even 250 milligrams three times a week was effective in reducing the number of exacerbations. Moreover, this is a real world study. A real world study has a, uh, is increasingly becoming a important aspect of uh, evidence-based medicine, because what uh, research does is uh, ha and, and, uh, takes into consideration patients who volitionally um, joined the study, whereas a real-world study is actually what the world, uh, the, the population, the, the study population is uh, showing the changes. So one of the other findings we had was that the side effect profile of uh, gastrointestinal uh, issues was much better in our study. The, the key method mechanisms by which azithromycin works is by its antibacterial, its anti-inflammatory, and its anti-reflux measures. So um, the future is that we uh, hope this will be used in uh, most of the guidelines and become an established aspect of um, asthma management.